Um, what do you see here? <gasps> what? Is that Miss Jenkins' name? That's right. It's my name, Jenkins. J-E-N-K-I-N-S. This is our next project that we are going to do, and it's based on line and shape. And those are two elements of art that is going to be your main focus for this project. So as you can see, I'm doing my name with large letters, and then I'm doing illustrations around or in the letters, so you can still see that it's the letters J-E-N-K-I-N-S. However, the illustrations are still part of that, um, but they're not, they're not camouflaging the letters. You can still tell what the letters are. So my illustrations were based on nature, and that's why you're seeing all these different elements from nature, flowers, leaves, bugs, mushrooms, um, there's some fish, and then there's a person right here that's reaching up for these apples in the tree. But for your name, and you can be your first name or your last name, whatever you choose, um, but for your name, I'm gonna want you to do your own theme, but if you wanna do nature, that's fine, because everyone's is gonna be different because everyone's name is different. But if you wanna do cars as your theme, or if you wanna do um, the circus as your theme, or if you wanna do the zoo as your theme, or if you wanna do I don't know, science as your theme. It's all up to you. Um, there's so many ways you could go with this. But I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the steps. Um, and then, of course, you're not going to copy me exactly. I think it's, go it's a good idea to practice with me so you can practice doing the letters. But ultimately, you're gonna do your own name, so you'll just get some practice with me and then you'll go and do it all on your own. So the things you're going to need is um, white paper, and this white paper can be just the standard size, like printer paper. And you want to fold it in half horizontally, or like you guys like to say, hot dog style. You fold it in half, and then you can cut it. So you would need scissors to actually cut it as well. So white paper, scissors, um, possibly a ruler if you're gonna need some stuff for straight lines. So you'll need a ruler. And ooh, I got my special unicorn ruler. Look at that, you guys, isn't that awesome? I love this ruler. All right, so a ruler. Um, of course, you need a pencil, and then you need an eraser if your pencil doesn't have an eraser. And you'll need some markers, so we've got some markers here, and it can be any kind of markers you have. Um, I actually did a combination of markers and colored pencils, so I also have my colored pencils here, um, because some of the details will be better with a pencil style tool, like colored pencils, or with thin markers, if you have thin markers, um, but if you're gonna want details and stuff, you can't just use thick markers for that. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all we need. Oh, and then maybe a skinny Sharpie or a thin like black pen that can sort of outline everything for you if needed. I outlined a lot of my stuff just because I wanted it to kind of pop off the letters more, but um, it just kind of depends on how you decide to color your background, the background of your letters, okay? So let's get started. So like I said, you can practice these letters with me now, and then you can go and do your own name when we're done with this video. So, to begin, I'm going to start with my J, and I want to use the height of this paper as much as possible. So, I'm gonna go almost all the way to the top. I still want a little bit of white space at the top. So there's my J. And one thing, you guys, and I'm gonna show you how this is gonna work right now, but you're gonna see that you need to plan your letters ahead of time because if you don't plan your letters ahead of time, you won't have enough room to actually do them. So I'm gonna stop and plan with you real quick, okay? So J, E, N, K, I, N, S. 
So, do you see how I ran into a problem here? I got, I had very little space left for my S and all my letters had to get a little bit smaller to fit. That's because I started doing the J immediately without first planning. So what you want to do is plan. So Jenkins has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters in it. So my fourth letter, which would be halfway between the J and the S. So letter number four is the K. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a letter K right here in the center of my paper. And that's where my K is gonna go. And I'm not doing this um, like the full outlined letter. I'm just doing sort of a line right now for my letters, okay? And then from there, I can go ahead and do my I right here. Once I kind of map out where my letters are gonna go, then I can build them up into bulkier letters as much as possible. But you definitely don't wanna like be halfway done drawing all your letters and then oops, you have to start over because you didn't leave yourself enough room. <coughs> Excuse me, boys and girls. All right, so then I'm gonna do my N. Then I'm gonna do my S. And so these are long, nice and tall. These letters are nice and tall. And right away, I can see that my K needs to be adjusted just a little bit to be a little bit more narrow. It's still gonna be in the middle of my page, but I'm gonna make it slightly more narrow. Everything's gonna get bulkier once we start adding to the letters. So then what comes before the K? It's my N. And notice I'm drawing lightly with my pencil, and this is so that I can easily erase and not have all these pencil marks everywhere that I don't want. Okay, and there is my J. Now that I've planned my letters according to the space I've got created, I can now start bulking them up and making them um, into sort of block letters, okay? So to do that, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this with my Sharpie just so you can see more clearly, but you'll do this with pencil and then you'll go back and adjust with your Sharpie. So I'll start over here and I'm basically gonna be building sort of around and within the letters that I've already written down, okay? So you see how I did that? So part of my J is right on top of some of the J that was already there and some of it is built around it. So then my E, I'm just gonna bulk it up from the inside. Come down, bulk it up from the inside again and leave myself some space down there so that the bottom of that E becomes the last line within my E. My N, I'm gonna come up with it to do that to make it block and then I'm going to come like that I'm not going to go all the way down I'm going to come back up make it a block come back down notice I'm close to that K but I'm still not hitting that K I'm going to come out here go up come back down at an angle and finish it up there's my N and I've got my K. So you can see how planning where our letters are gonna go is very helpful in actually creating the right spacing, okay? Because you're sort of creating like, you know, boundaries for yourself or guidelines for yourself so that you're able to fit your letters just right. So here's my I. And this is this kind of stuff where if you want to use a ruler, you can totally use your ruler. Um, I'm not using a ruler, but I'm also not obsessed with making them perfectly perfect lines. I kind of like to have a little variation in my lines. Okay, we've got that N again. Down, but not all the way. I'm gonna use that part of the N that's already there. And I will come down over here up till about there, come back down at a diagonal, got my N right there. Now the S can be tricky because with the deal with the S is you have to make 
up here you have to start kind of smaller within it and then down here you get bigger okay you see how I just did that I used my line that was already there to guide my S shape but I started smaller within that shape because you're gonna go around that piece and go inside the larger piece of the S and that's what's gonna make it um, uniform and work out okay so I've got my letters now you would use your pencil again you would begin by erasing those guidelines that were there when you first planned your letters you'd erase all of those get all that pencil line that's there that you don't need out of there um, if you wanted to sharpie oops sharpie your correct uh, lines first and then go over the whole letter and erase all the stuff you don't need that's totally fine notice how when I just erased I just went like boom like that real quick that's because I did not hold my paper when I was erasing I think I've talked to you guys about this in class before and then I just forgot myself so remember that when you're erasing erase towards you and hold here if you're erasing away from you you don't generally have to hold okay so I've got my letters and now I'm going to draw my, my stuff. So I did a nature one for this one, right? Um, I think I would rather do art supplies for this next one. So I'm gonna do art supplies within my letters, okay? And I'm gonna, again, use my Sharpie just because I want you to be able to see really clearly what's happening here, but you will use pencil so that you're able to adjust any errors or any issues, okay? So let's see, how about right here, I put a pencil. So here's an eraser and you can do art supplies if you want to also, it's totally fine with me. If you wanna do what I'm doing, that's okay. So here's a pencil I'm doing. And a pencil is going to have that eraser, the metal part that has the stripes, and then it will have that, and then this would be colored in black. We'll come back and color later on. Um, if you wanted to do an eraser, and remember guys, you have these supplies, so you can actually look at your supplies and draw them. So I'm gonna put this eraser over here, and I am going to draw it as part of my J down here. So I'm gonna go like that, and like that, and like that. And then to make it a three-dimensional dimensional eraser, I'm gonna add these two lines that come down. And over here, that matches that. And there's my eraser, but then here's the eraser, the cardboard piece on the eraser is right there. Let's see what else we can do. We can do um, a paintbrush. The length of a paintbrush can go here. And again, a paintbrush ends up having a little bit of a metal thing before it gets to the hairs on the paintbrush, right? And there's my paintbrush. And here I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a watercolor palette right along this. And I'm gonna put my watercolor wells right into there. Those will be painted different colors. <clears throat> and I'll do another paintbrush here. But this paintbrush will be larger, a larger paintbrush, and again, silver thing that goes right after the hairs and that's a really big paintbrush it's a large flathead paintbrush and then I'm gonna do some tubes of paint over here the rest of the end so these tubes at the top they have kind of a cap that has two curved sections and then kind of come out like this so you wouldn't see the rest of it um, there's also tubes that look like this that 
look like that. Then they come down. And then I'm going to do some, some paint kind of oozing out of them. Isn't that fun? There we go. Um, and then I'm going to do a ruler. It's going to go all the way up. And I'm going to put my large mark here for the six and a large mark here for the one. So that's one, and that's six, and the end of the ruler here is the 12. And then within that, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then little small marks in between longer lines. The small marks will represent the um, millimeters in between those inches. I mean, if you want to be really, really specific, you can actually look at a ruler and try to do exactly what's there. I think I did that for my sketchbook project. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do a pair of the scissors, and I'm gonna find some scissors that I can actually look at to draw. All right, so I've got some scissors there, and I'm gonna do a big piece of the scissor here. That's part of the handle, and it comes down. Other part of the scissors is smaller and it comes down this way. I make it three dimensional. And this one would have an oval inside of it. And then they would come down together. And then you would see the blade. Alright, so we've got some scissors there. And I'm going to do some colored pencils. So, there's one. Notice I'm using the shapes or the, the length of the, the, you know, the lines inside my shapes to, shapes of the letters to help me create my um, supplies. Like, so I'm kind of letting the space determine what to do within that space. I'm going to do a box of oil pastels right here. So the lid is off. And within that space, there's a bunch of oil or chalk pastels in there. I'm going to do a protractor right here. Should we use you guys? Uh, how about some markers? Yes, some markers and then we'll do some crayons. So here is a Crayola marker. Here's the cap. And down here it does that like wiggly line and then the Crayola markers have that middle section. So here's another Crayola marker. Here we're going to do some crayons. Wavy, wavy, oval. Wavy. Now, boys and girls, if you want your images drawings of items or whatever you're using to create your on your letters if you want those to pop out nice and bright um, in front of the actual background which is the letter you want to make sure that you do try to do lighter colors behind 
and brighter colors in front for the littler objects. So a good idea would even be to use, like here I did clouds and rain, and so I just used a color pencil to do a very light layer of blue with my color pencil. Some places I still used marker, and that's just because I chose colors that I knew would still they wouldn't eat away at the actual drawings within your name. So just make sure that you choose, um, you know, appropriate colors. Don't choose like blue on blue or, you know, dark blue with something green on top of it because that may not show up very well. So just think about your choices there and make sure that you're thinking before you act. And I cannot wait to see how you do with your names. Um, as usual, um, or you know, based on last week at least, you're still going to upload to the hub. Um, the assignment will be there and there will be a due date, so it will be due one week from today. And you'll see um, the same information um, on the hub for due dates and where to upload your photo. All right, love you guys and good job.